Okay, before we talk about drilling lots of blind holes efficiently, let's talk about one of the drilling concepts that matters more and more the deeper your holes get. Sometimes it's called peck drilling, sometimes it's called deep drilling, sometimes it's called drilling with a full retract. And to visualize it, I'm going to temporarily change the bottom of my drill height to be a full negative one inches down from the top. Okay, now with this much deeper hole visualized, try to imagine how it's going to get harder to keep the drill from overheating and to get the chips that we've cut at the bottom of the hole up the spiral flutes and out the top of the hole to make room for more chips to get cut. If we simply send a drill deeper and deeper and deeper into a hole, eventually that operation is going to fail. The solution to this challenge is to change from drilling to deep drilling with a full retract. Go ahead and make that change to your drilling operation now and set your pecking depth to 20 thou and click OK and simulate to see the results. Notice how now the drill descends into the material only 20 thou and then fully retracts before returning to drill 20 thou deeper and so on. And since this can be difficult to see with opaque stock, look on your simulation panel for your stock transparent checkbox and check it. This provides a nice view of the gradually increasing depth of the hole. And while this drilling mode is going to take more time, it's going to afford you two key results. One, it's going to let the drill retract from the hole where the coolant is, allowing the tool to cool off. And when it retracts to cool off, it's also going to bring all the chips up with it to be blasted off by the flood coolant, making room in the flutes of the tool for a bit more drilling. Go ahead and set your bottom height back to negative 0.07 inches, but leave this drilling mode intact. When you simulate, you should see a couple full retracts, even in this very shallow blind hole. Good, let's make all the rest. Right click on your dot one setup and duplicate it. And notice the naming convention that Fusion uses. It's calling this one dot one and then puts two in a parenthesis. So I'm going to rename the first one just dot with no number. And I'm going to let Fusion add the number by default every time I duplicate it. There we go. And for this one dot two, I want to represent the number two on a six sided die. So edit your center drilling toolpath and come back to the geometry tab and delete the selection that we had before and instead select this circle and this circle to represent the number two on a six sided die. Then edit your drilling tool path and do the same thing. Geometry tab, delete the old selection and select these two circles. And then same for the chamfer as well. Geometry tab, delete the old selection and select those two circles. Now simulate this new setup, dot two, and see that we center drill both, we drill both, and then we chamfer both. And before you charge ahead to make the other four, let's do a little bit of tidying up to make this part easier. Let's give dot a program number that's unique. Let's call it 1011, with that last one representing the number one on the die. And let's also give it your personal work coordinate system. Mine's 86, yours will be different. For dot two, let's call it program number 1012, and the two is gonna represent the number two on the six sided die. There we go. Now duplicate that original dot setup to get dot three, reposition it so that dot three comes after dot two and make the same adjustments. Adjust the geometry selections for all three tool paths and adjust the program number. Give it a quick simulate to see that you've created the results you want, and then continue to duplicate for dots four, five, and six. And all along the way, notice that we never bothered to turn the virtual cube onto its side. We've drilled all of these dot patterns right down into the top of the cube, because in reality, we're gonna bring a physical drill that can only descend down into the top. So any turning that we're gonna do, we're gonna do physically with our metal object, not virtually here in Fusion. And oh my goodness, it is satisfying seeing all of these come together. A lot of the power of fusion and of CNC milling shows up when you start confronting challenges of volume, when you start trying to make many identical or many similar patterns. 
Great, now let's post the G-code for all six setups, one after the other, creating programs numbered 1011, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, each program containing the G-code to drill one face of our six-sided die. Then look at all six G-code programs in your text editor for a couple of key details. Just make sure that all your Z-min values are the same across all six. We should never be drilling deeper into the die on any of the six sides. And then glance through again to confirm that your tool numbers are the same for each program. We should be using tool 12, 13, and 14 for all six programs. And lastly, look at your work coordinate system for all six programs. It should show clearly your personal work coordinate system and it should be the same for all six. These three checks for typos or red flags in your critical lines of G-code go a long way towards preventing catastrophe at the mill. Next up, we're gonna load it and cut all six sides.